Cubs making some moves today with the roster David Bodie sent to the minor leagues. We're going to talk a little bit about the Cubs, and then we're going to talk a lot about the bleachers. Got one of my buddies on that you guys know from watching Cubs games or maybe listening to a little Cubs music. Danny Rocket's going to be on with me, so don't go anywhere. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and uh, let's get this bleacher party started like this. <laughs> What do you say, everybody? Great to have Danny Rocket on at Sun Ronto. And I'm uh, at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. But uh, well, I feel like I've known you forever, brother. Good And great to have you on. I think the first time I ever heard of you was uh, when you were doing the spring training broadcast with Len Casper. And I would tune into all those. That was must listen to. Uh, for a for sore winter ears, you know, with, you know, with. Uh, headphones uh, under my earmuffs and I would be listening to you guys out there doing the spring games. And, uh, yeah, and those, I, I, we were talking about it right before I came on how I missed your rapport because, you know, that was before a lot of teams had games Yeah, that, right. that they were broadcasting this spring. Maybe the WGN would show one or two during the spring, but you guys really had something unique and a great rapport. And it's just, it's great to be on here. So I think it's been at least 14 years since I first tweeted at you or something like that. So thanks for having me on. It's great. And I love your uh, new show that you got here, the Cubs baseball channel, and just wish you all the luck with it. Hey, thanks, man. And it, it is great to talk to you in person. And then, you know, I see you do shows too. And, and definitely tell people about those before we get off. And I miss the webcast, you know, messing with Len every day was a blast. Right. And, and it's, but it's weird that he's a white sock now, you know, like as much as I love him, you know, that, uh, what are you doing, Len? So now we know how the white Sox. <laughs> yeah. now, now we know how the White Sox fans felt when Harry Carey came over to the north side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, isn't that isn't that kind of part of this, right? Well, we wish him the best, and um, you know, and, and I, I remember those days, and I miss him, you know, especially dur like during spring training. Like some of these games aren't on anymore, and it's like, man, I'd love to have, even if it wasn't me, somebody calling it, just so we could talk about it. And getting into that, let's just talk a little bit about this roster, right? Because uh, and I, I don't, and honestly, I don't even know when I'm going to air this could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. So you guys are going to watch this and I mean, pretty much it'll still be current, but, uh, are you surprised at all that David Bodie's not going to make the team? I'm not just because he's not on the 40 man roster. And that's the only reason, but you know, and plus like, I believe Christopher Morrell led the team in homers last spring and he didn't make the team either. So it just seems to be the MO of the Chicago Cubs. If you hit a bunch of dogs in the spring, you're going to Iowa. That's just how it's going to be. But I mean, Bodie's just like a, a really well-paid insurance policy. Yeah. Um, and you know, he hit that big grand slam at Wrigley ran around the bases like an airplane. Everybody will always love him for that. But a prospect golden slam, Danny, the golden yeah. slam. And it, and it was incredible. And he's had a great spring. He's a professional ball player. He's probably almost like a coach down there at Iowa at this point, a mentor yeah. to some of these young guys. And that's valuable in its own way. Now, I don't know if they've had this conversation with David or about, you know, hey, you're not making the team unless everybody gets hurt and we need you so badly. And that literally what it would what it would be. There would have to be room on the 40 man and with such great prospects coming up right now for the Cubs and a little bit of a roster crunch, to be honest, as far as the bench goes, mm -hmm. um, you know, Bodie's just not going to fit in there because there's other guys that they don't want to lose off the 40 mans. They don't have to add David. So unfortunately for him, um, no, he could hit 20 home runs. He might not make the squad, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened, but it's good to see that, I, I talked to him a little bit in spring training. He, his spirits are up. You know, they, they had him playing some left field. He, you know, he's a utility guy. I, I don't know that he's – shortstop seems like a big position for him, but he handles third and second fine. I know he's in left field. He's a great person. He's obviously paid 
$6.5 million to be on the big league roster. So at least with a new manager, I feel like there's a possibility that we'll see him. But you're right. There's a lot of young guys coming, too, that are eventually going to be pushing for spots, which I think is a good thing for the Cubs. You know, the more competition, the better. We were talking before about when we fell in love with the Cubs. And for me, it was watching WGN in the 80s. You know, uh, Harry Carey, Steve Stone, our, you know, Rhino, and – uh, Sean Dunstan and, um, you know, Jody Davis, who's a great friend of mine now, th those teams all the way since then, I love the Cubs. How did you become a Cubs fan? It's about the same kind of time. My, my family, although I was born in the Chicago area in Elgin, uh, my family was living in Washington, DC and we moved back to be near my, gr uh, grandma and, uh, so we got here in the 82 or something like that. And I remember 1983, you know, they had the Cubs games on WGN at this little black and white TV. And I, and that's when I started wanting to play hick hooky in the, in April yes. day. And I said, Oh, I don't feel so good today. I'm going to stay home and watch this hilarious broadcaster named Harry Carey. And my dad was a big baseball fan, grew up a Tiger fan. So he encouraged my love of the sport. And so as uh, kind of time went on, it really was the Harry and Steve Stone show growing up. You'd come home from school catch the last few innings, hopefully. Uh, I mean, that's right when Steve Goodman wrote that the Go Cubs Go song. Yeah. Our bus driver would play it in the bus sometimes because he was a big Cub fan and all the kids would sing. So it really, it, 1984 was such a special year for the Cubs. We're coming up on the, oh my God, 40th anniversary of that. So, uh, you know, when you, or it's this year, isn't it? Yeah. So that, you know, you mentioned the players, uh, Sandberg, Dernier, Gary Matthews, Jody Davis, like those guys, they stole my 10 year old heart at the time. Uh, yeah. So when he came over. Yeah. And, and a lot of those guys are still involved with the team, you yeah. know, here and there, like you say, you're good friends with Jody and Jody yeah. comes up to all the events at club 400 with Stuart McVicker and all the charity work that he does. Jody's always around. So these guys are still around so that they feel that way too, about that team. It's not just me and you that feel that way about 84, like Jody and Sut feel that way about 84 too. And they're near, like they, they have that same love for each other. And so, you know, when that happens to a 10 year old, it's just forever you go to Wrigley Field for the first time. I think it was 1983. My dad brought me and, you know, I just, I, how could you not fall in love with Wrigley Field? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And the bleachers too. You know, we were poor, so we went, we sat in the bleachers, right? Four bucks. And, right. And, and and that was the only way we could get into a game, which, I mean, can you imagine going now for four bucks? I mean, you know, it's sitting out there, <laughs> well, the language out there. And my dad telling me like, hey, you know, this is the way you talk out in the bleachers. It's not the way you talk in school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of unrepeatable things that I heard out there as a child, but you know, my, the bass player of my band, uh, Jarrett, he's, uh, we used to howl around and go because his, he had older parents to let us do what we want. So we got to go out there very young and my mom would give us a, here's 10 bucks for, for a ticket for lunch and bus fare to and from the game and it was just about and i want change you know that kind of thing i want the two dollars that you're not spending and that was enough for it but him and i would we still reminisce about the freedom that we felt 12 13 years old this would have been like 86 87 going down to wrigley field by ourselves and they were all day games and so it, it was accessible i mean that's why i i didn't end up a Sox fan like, all my cousins are Sox fans mm. You know, my Damn. mom was a Sox fan growing up, but she switched to the Cubs because it's on in the daytime. It's a much, you know, more pleasant experience. Wrigley Field is a shrine to baseball as opposed to whatever they call that place on the South side. And, you know, um, it's just, it, it, there's a romance to the Cubs that I think, I know that other fans of other teams have that feeling, mm. but I just doubt it i doubt <laughs> as well. I, I can't get away from it like it's it's so enshrined in my soul that no matter how upset i could be about things that happen with the cubs right including the bartman game and you know different stuff like you know the the, the, the all the heartbreak over the years i still love them like it's just like i can't get away from it 
I, and it's I don't have that relationship with any other team that I cover, even Alabama. I cover Alabama with the school there. Love Alabama, but it's a different love than I have for the Cubs. I, and I don't know why. I feel like Harry did this to me. Yeah, Harry, I think, had a big part of it. I walked by that. St- I live by Wrigley Field, and so I, I walk by that statue just about every day, and I get, I do the stupid weather report that I always put I out. Every day. I, I tell people, uh, you know, what the weather's like in my immediate area, and I walk by that statue, and, and you know, I always appreciate it. It's like looking at, a, at, a, at the lake. You know, I'm never going to get sick of – uh, seeing Wrigley Field, being by those statues of, you know, then there's the greats. Sandberg's going to get a statue this year. I can't wait till that's up there. Yeah. But you see Fergie, and I watched him pitch when I was a kid at yeah. the end of his career. Or I remember watching him pitch. I remember Great going on the other way, too. Down oh. to earth. Oh, yeah. Super down to earth and kind of a weirdo, too. Like he's, he's funny, like not in a bad way, and just like, he, he talks to everybody the exact everybody. same way. Yeah. He could talk to the president of the United States or or me or some little kid, and he's going to just act the exact same. Love and that. that that is a, a testament to him and I think who he is, but it, it comes off strange because a lot of those guys, they're a little standoffish because, yeah, right. you know, and they should be because yeah. people are always in their face, but he's just familiar with everybody. And it's very cool, um, you know, but – you, you walk around that stadium and there's been a lot of changes since we were kids. Um, since 84, when it was a parking lot, now it's this big Gallagher way and there's corporate offices and whatnot. But, you know, when you look at like the, it's the ballpark itself and the fact that it's nestled into the the neighborhood and right. the people that really live there, it just makes it unique. And, Play, people like the pirates, like they try to copy that with their newer, newer stadium, put it downtown, but it'll never be Wrigley unless it's sitting there for another hundred years. You talk about Steve Goodman, right? And I love Jimmy Buffett, a Cubs fan, by the way, and John Prine. And I think about those guys. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're going to talk about the bleacher bum band and the, the fact that you, you write songs and perform with other guys in the bleachers and, and music, Cubs music, baseball music. But I just think about like the 70s, right? Having those guys being in like, you know, hanging around Wrigley and bars in Chicago, right? John Prine, Jimmy Buffett, Steve Goodman, and probably some other cats that I'm not even mentioning. But any inspiration from those guys for you? Absolutely. Well, you've got the Old Town School of of Folk Music really close over in Lincoln Square. And those guys used to hang out over here, there. Uh, Steve Goodman wrote a song called The Lincoln Park Pirates, which is all about the tow truck that come and take your park o- or your car away. Oh, yeah. that, that place still exists. It's right up on Clark, just north of me here, just north of Wrigley Field. And so, like, a, lo- a lot of the places that those guys talked about, um, you know, they still exist. So that's uh, that there's a connection that uh, carries through to this day. But then there's... Um, I think the Cubs in general have always been sort of a muse for artists. Um, baseball is has always been a very uh, poetic sport, you know, yeah. and has inspired incredible artwork, whether it be from Norman Rockwell or the famous tickers to ever's a chance Casey at the bat. But there's also lots of music, you know, that comes out of it. You know, even like what's that guy, Scott Stapp from uh, I believe that's his name. Stained. Stained, St- Stained is it, maybe I get the wrong guys, the Creed guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it is Creed guy. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it, if that I is. Creed, I might have the guys mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he wrote a song about the Marlins. You know. It, it, you know. There's just. <laughs> you were sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game." We have "Go Cubs Go." They sing "Sweet Caroline." Music is a huge part of baseball, as it is in a way the national anthem, in a way that it necessarily isn't in other sports, except for maybe the national anthem. So, I I feel like there's a lot of point to it. Um. And I certainly found a lot of inspiration from the Cubs just because I love them. And also because uh, it's easy to, when you, when you have a team that's so beloved by so many people and like, I've been a parody writer my whole life. I worked for morning radio. A lot of the parodies that you listen to, like driving to work in the morning that some DJ is playing and it, he and it seems like he made it up and is sending it out. I produce those, and and so like, do you still was, do that? Yeah, I do, I do. And um, so it, it's like, so I'm writing that stuff, I'm producing it, I'm singing it, and I'm and I do it for myself as well, not just for my day job. 
And so um, the Cubs were an easy fit for, for all that. And that's how all that got started. Like um, I sang like a Jason Hayward parody when they signed him. And I did it to Hey Jude, you know, Hey word, you are the man. And it blew up all of a sudden in hundreds of thousands of YouTube views. And I don't get paid for any of that. Cause I didn't write Hey Jude. Right. So, you know, so, but still it like blew up and I'm like, Oh, this is great. Everybody likes this. I'm going to do it again. And I did it again and again and again. Right, right. And then all of a sudden I'm hanging out in the bleachers and I had already had a band. I was singing my parody songs and my comedy music around with uh, bands of various shapes and forms with, right. Yeah, and then uh, Bleacher Jeff, who a lot of people know, and who sits in the bleachers every single day and left field corner. One day he just mentions to me, "Hey, you know I got a rehearsal space that I've been paying for because ever since my band broke up a couple of years ago, I'd share it with this other guy." I'm like, "Oh, well, let's go over there and jam." So then he played. I didn't know he played guitar, and so all of a sudden we got this band, and I kind of merged my band with him, and then we got another you know, four more drummers and you know, how, <laughs> you know how that goes. We, we definitely have had a spinal tap drummer situation over the years we've been playing the music together. But after all these kind of happenstantial things, I never intended to necessarily have a Cubs band, but um, you know, people seem to like it. And so that encouraged me to do more of it. And so I just keep doing more and more and more of it. Now we've got two albums under our belt, hundreds of songs. I got a new opening day song that's coming out nice. um, real soon. That's not necessarily Cubs specific, but it's obviously a very, it's a high holy day for those of us who are big baseball fans. Yeah. So, um, so I figured we'd celebrate with a new song that just the bass player of Bleacher Bump Band came over and recorded that with me just the other day. So, uh, and that's the kid I used to pal around it, it with in the bleachers when I was 13. So it all comes, we are truly the Bleacher Bump Band. All, all of us love the Cubs and, uh, and we don't suck either. So we're actually really good as well good at uh, playing rock and roll we do some parodies do some covers keep it you know try to keep with the we, we try to keep with the uh what's going on with the team in the yeah, moment right right not, well, not let it get stale I've got some of your songs here and you play a lot in wrigleyville right yeah um and here's i'm just gonna play this a little bit of it i love <laughs> the fact that you wrote a song about somebody that took bleacher uh bleacher bum jeff's feet yeah um it kind of tells the story. If you just pull it a play a little bit. Story? Yeah, I'll play a little of it right here. <laughs> but here's the bridge. So I'll kind of come in and tell you what the story was of it. Is a um, yeah, it was a rain delay. And it was a bobblehead day. It was, it's all in the song. But uh, Jeff, the, you see the picture that's on here right now. That is actually Poncho Boy from that day. Right. And uh, apparently, uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently uh, the guy just kind of took exception to the fact that uh, bleachers, although they are general admission technically, have their regulars and right. a lot of people respect those regular seats. He took exception to that. He's a season ticket holder, although he maybe doesn't go to as many games as Jeff does. Um, he, he made a point to run to Jeff's seat to uh, commandeer it. Now, that's one thing, except for the four hour rain delay. Yeah, right. So that's what was impressive to me is you can see in this picture, he's wearing a poncho. The why this song is called The Ballad of Poncho Boy. <laughs> First of all, I don't know his name, nor do I care to know it. Right, 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 right. And, and, and it makes uh, it better anyway. Though. It makes it better because he did not relinquish that seat. He sat there with that poor woman uh, that apparently is his wife or his girlfriend. But uh, either way, run screaming from that man. He's not the one for you. Um, but he sat there all through the rain, all through the delay. And then all through the game, I'm like, the man has must have a bladder of steel because my God, he did not get up. He didn't move. Yeah, he right. didn't move. Here's another and funny. Well, here's another funny one. Let me. That, that's great. But I, I got to get to this one. Oh yeah, I please have back on because I I could sit here all day and do this. But this was my favorite. No oh, fighting yeah. in the bleach. You even got some. You even got some video of it. Look at this guy. It looked like the game was over by the time they were fighting. Yeah, this is. This is the original time that I wrote the song. Uh, 
there, there's a punk rock version that I thought I sent you. This is the wrong version. <laughs> but this is a this is a gospel version back when I had long blue ha- long blue hair. But um so good. Th- this was for actually the the Christmas. We do a Christmas Cubs miss Christmas caroling every year. And then oh, I see you with the blue hair. Yeah, with the blue hair up in the corner. Yeah, this is this is for our Cubs miss caroling event because we we sang this uh, one year because it's really to the tune of Go Tell It on the Mountain. Yeah, Go yeah. Fighting in the Bleachers and Go Tell It on the Mountain are are virtually the exact same song except for the guitar solo. So um, anyway, th- we were sitting there in the left field bleachers. The Cubs had lost a close game, and all of a sudden to our left, a giant fight broke out and it, it, it was ugly. I mean, it, it was yeah. pretty much a melee. Um, the next morning I got up and I flew to LA. Um, I had a gig out there for my buddy's 40th birthday. And, um, I, now I posted this video of the fight. Didn't really think anything of it. I saw it went viral as fights tend to do. Yeah. Didn't really think anything of it. The Cubs end up calling me. And they are, and um, they wanted to talk to me. Hey, what happened in this fight? And I told them, you know, what had happened. And, you know, they asked me to take the video down. And I said, well, I think that ship has sailed, my friends. Like Barstool already picked it up. So, like, there's nothing I can do about it now. But, um, you know, I'll just, you know, I, I just told them what I knew. Anyway, right after I talked to the Cubs, I sat down at my buddy's piano and I wrote, no fighting in the bleachers yeah. to the tune of Go Tell It on the Mountain. And then I brought it back to the band and we punked it up. You know, there is no fighting in the bleachers, you know, and it's yeah. just like, God, we have a punk rock version. You can look that one up on uh, Spotify. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, yeah. That's funny. And so is there fights out there often? I, I hardly ever see any. I mean, I, I see people going back and forth, but to actually you know, have like a fight doesn't seem like that happens too much. You know, in the last few years, it's been a little bit worse um, only because the Cubs have stunk. Yeah, And uh, when they stink, the ticket prices tend to die. So you get a kind of a different kind of crowd out there than you do when the ticket prices are high. You know, um, it gets, it's a little bit more like the crowd that we saw as young. Yeah. Right. Young, right. young kids. Well, little, the crowd that I went with. with yeah, that. A little rougher on the edges. The guys that came in with like a fifth of vodka uh, snuck yeah. in, into their big gulp that they bought across <laughs> the street from the Seven right, Eleven. <laughs> bring your own food in. right? Oh yeah. Man, well, you can still bring your own food, just the big gulp they make you, you dump out at this yeah, point. But yeah, right, right. The the funny thing, and, and I'll I'll leave you at this with this one is it's when I, I interviewed for uh the job when Len left that Boog got. And and um they they asked me at the end of the interview, do I have any questions? And I say, Well, if I get this job, would you guys mind if I bought a round of beer for the bleachers? And they looked at me like I was just crazy for saying what? That. Yeah. But if it ever happens, man, I, yeah. oh, I, I, I expect you guys to do uh, a, a, a drink. Oh from- yeah. We'll all toast you from the bleachers. Yeah. That's just up, up to the booth. Dreaming of baby, except maybe go, go out there and maybe I'll just have like a sip. I don't know. Yeah, like well, like Harry was <laughs> sipping. Harry used to say Harry used to do uh shows from the or games from the bleachers. I know. I know. How many um, do you go to? How many games do you get to a year? Well, it really depends, of course, on what else is going on in my life and stuff. Right. Uh, it, you know, in 2016, I went to uh, like over between spring training and I going on the road because my band toured that year. And so we would try to line it up with Cubs games. Um, it, it, that was I went to over 100 games that year. Nice. And that that was, a uh, you know, I mean, I'm talking to a broadcaster right now. So yeah. you're like, yeah, whatever. I'm there every day anyway. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> games, you know, like every I day of my life is yeah. baseball game. So Exa- exactly. So, uh, yeah. So that was like a hundred. I mean, I think probably last year I went to a little less and, and, um, uh, I mean a lot less than a hundred, but, um, fewer than I would have liked to just from getting busy. But on the, the other side of it, I've kind of enjoyed, uh, catching the game in different ways lately right, right, um right. having gone to so many of them uh, you know it's always fun to go to Wrigley Field but you know I like catching a game hanging out with uh, Ball Hawk Dave on the yeah. corner right and just I go hang out and I'll have the radio on and I'll just go over there and hang out with him for a while maybe walk around the stadium catch some sights and sounds maybe not yeah. maybe go in maybe not because like some weeknights, you know, there's a ticket, you know, Hey, I got an extra ticket for yeah, you right, to go right. in and, uh, you know, it doesn't even matter where it is. You just go in and then sometimes not. And then, um, the other thing I've been doing is I've been practicing Spanish a lot. And so I've been listening to Miguel Esparza on right. the radio. 
broadcaster. Yeah, and he's a great broadcaster, and not only and and now he's a great friend because I was listening to the to the games, and then I tweeted at him in Spanish, you know, gracias para uh, para uh, ayudarme con el español. Like, thank you for helping with the uh, with Spanish. I kind of I think I said that wrong, but um, just enough for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he, you know, he got what I meant, and then so we had a rapport to the point where he came out to the bleachers at the end of last year, and uh, he was with his partner Jorge, and. They interviewed me in Spanish. That's awesome. And dude. I was able to do it. Like I was telling them all about the food, la comida and the yeah, bleachers yeah, yeah. that we all got to eat, you know, because we have a potluck every year at the last day. And so that was really cool. And so you know, th- another special thing about the Cubs being in a neighborhood, you're hanging out in the neighborhood. You get yeah, to know right. people, the yeah. people are around, you know, it's a scene. You see people on the street. It's they're They're not going to a parking garage. If you are coming out of Wrigley field, we're all going out the same entrance. Yeah. Yeah. You, me and Ron Coomer, we're all coming out the same I way. Know. You Love know? Ronnie. All right. Last thing. And I've, I've got to cut it right here. I could talk to you all day. We'll do it again for, yeah, definitely. First thing I, I want you to tell me how people can follow you. And the second thing I want you to tell me, and I want you to do it uh, in less than two minutes, your favorite piece of Cubs memorabilia. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Bleacher Bum Band is the band. You can find that on Spotify, YouTube, anywhere you listen to music. It's all streaming there. So give us a listen. We got two albums. Um, the at Sunranto, that's like Ron Santo with the R and the S switched is my Twitter and Sunranto show is the show. And so if you could find that, we usually go every Thursday night and have a live podcast that so we have infield fly girl, Michael Cotton, have a good time. And then favorite piece of Cubs memorabilia. Um, I'm going to have to play a little show and tell, just rip it. Do it, do it, do it. Um, so this, um, uh, oh, I can't, it's stuck on. I don't know what. I forgot it fell and I put a new thing. So I'll have to tell you what it is. Andre Dawson, as we both, as most cup fans know, Um, is, is a licensed funeral director. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't as well as being a MVP baseball player. So I got to chance to meet him and have him sign something at an event. And I didn't know what's a very much of a ball, but bat that's boring to me. So I had a friend of mine uh, mock up a uh, death certificate. So right here, hanging on my wall, it's right here. I'm pointing at it uh, right next to the Bleacher Bum Band poster is an Andre Dawson signed. Here lies the world's greatest Cubs fan uh, signed by licensed funeral director Andre Dawson. It is not yet filled out. No. Um, so that's, I don't know who to put in there, but it's bad luck to put somebody until they die. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Danny, great talking, man. Uh, go Cubs and let's do it again soon. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Mick. And uh, good luck with everything this year, this Thank season. You. Thank you. All right, brother. Hey, guys, like and subscribe, thumbs up, hit the bell. We'll talk to you soon.